Hello everybody and welcome back to CHOP, DIY CHOP. And we had an awesome session the last time uh, about basics and if you didn't, uh, if you're new to this and this is your first video, uh, I highly recommend you uh, watch uh, my first video which is uh, DIY CHOP Introduction to Basics, uh, Building Basics. It's some great information in there that everybody needs to know. But uh, just kind of real quick here, uh, you know, our messages, our message board. I got a couple of uh, messages about putting lift kits on Jeeps. And it's amazing uh, about this because I actually have a Jeep. And I'm actually doing a lift kit on it. Now, I've already done the back, uh, and, but I haven't done the front. But we're going to do this on, a, a, on another episode, probably our next episode. And specifically, it was about this model which happens to be the Jeep that I actually am working on. And I'm telling you, this is this is a cool, cool request. So, but, uh, on our last video, we, we did an intro on uh, basics, and we started a 77 Pontiac Bandit Edition Trans Am. And uh, we started with the motor. We had a little bit of uh, some troubleshooting issues with the block, putting the uh, motor block together. And I was actually going to do a painting session on this, but on this session here but I decided to go ahead and paint everything so that way you know it kind of speeds up the video a little bit and we can show you you know visually you know the building so but what I've done is, is I've, I've already uh, painted the chassis and uh, basically painted the chassis black uh, flat black uh, now with me you know, I like to paint back here because when you put this on here, you don't see all the white stuff on the upper side of the frame when you put the body on. So I always paint back further and paint this real good. So, and by, by doing that, we also uh, painted all the, all the suspension parts and the wheels and some of the motor parts and I painted everything pretty basic for you uh, I do want to get into some detailing and I have detailed some parts uh, but you know just did our little bit of creativity uh, this is uh, painted with the Carmoly silver and that is time consuming so I went ahead and I painted everything silver uh, with the Carmoly and I did a little bit of detail you know, on the front of the engine, I don't know if y'all can see it. Uh, did the the front side of the block blue, and also did the upper manifold with chromoly. So, and we're just going to get started on this uh, just real quick here, and kind of uh, rust up. And get, uh, we also painted the body, but there's some flaws in it. And I'll bring that back to you here probably at the end of this video if we got time. If not, we'll start a new video on the, on the bottom part. But what you want to do is you want to take the chassis and you know, put it on the table here. Not just right in front of you, you know. And you want to start on the instruction book. Open up your instruction book. And just read, you know, just it, it tells you where to put the parts. So, but you got the manifold, the oil pan and the transmission pan and that's what we're going to assemble but first we've got to get the block now what I did on the block uh, is I painted the transmission with chromoly and I painted the block uh, mandarin blue or dark uh, it, it's it's a royal blue with a little bit of darkness to it but uh, you want to take that off and just basically you can wiggle it or you can take your Exacto knife and just pop it right there. And you want to cut away because there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's some detail right here. And you don't want to cut the detail. And this is a real good, good uh, illustration here. What you do is you know, I always have a pair of these electric clippers, they're great stuff. You want to clip away from it like that. And leave a little itty bitty dicky little piece okay that's real important because this detail right here you can actually cut that detail out now 
Now what you can do, and my hemostats are missing, but that's okay. I got a small and big dinky little pair. These things are great too. These are like cheap pliers. You can get these like Dollar General on a $5.99 kit. But just basically just kind of grab a hold of it and just kind of wiggle it. And it should come right off. Yep, there you go. Pops it right off. Okay. And then you want to take your exacto blade and you very carefully want to just nip it off the very tip of it very very careful okay and that's the last spot you want to lay that down you know don't worry, you know where it's at. Don't want to lose no parts. Okay, then you want to take your manifold. Now, the manifold, now this one here, we should be able to just take the razor blade, score it. Always cut away from you so that way you don't get stitches. And then just, well, this one's going to be a little problematic, so we're going to have to do the the nipper idea. I'll tell you, these things here are great. Just got, you always snip away from the part. Never snip at the part. Never. Okay. And then there it goes. Always go away from you. There you go. And then you just basically take it and just do a little scrape. Now you're gonna scrape some of the paint off, but that's okay, we'll go back later on and we'll actually touch that all up. And just make sure it's, get that flange off. You're gonna take a little bit of paint off and that's okay, if you scratch it, that's fine. Because you can always just dab just a little bit of paint corrections, in, and that's part of the process. Well, you, you can't trim these parts without taking some of the paint off. But later on, it's a, it, it's real easy. A, a child can do it. But anyway, okay? You want to pay attention to where the, t the top of your manifold, okay? The uh, sherbet cap goes right there where my fingernail is, and then which I believe so, we'll just have to double check it. Actually, I'm wrong. I'm glad I checked the instruction book. This is where the distributor cap goes, and right here is where the hose goes to the radiator. So, see, I, even I can make it, and that wasn't an intentional mistake. I actually made a mistake. But, it's okay. We're still, that's why we got to double check the instruction books. Even model masters like me make mistakes. Then you just put a dab of glue. Oh, wait a minute. Forgot. You got a dry fit. See, so made another mistake. Hopefully, we'll see if this thing works on here right. Uh oh. Remember what I told you about locking parts together? I just locked them. That's okay. You can take your razor blade, stick it right up underneath. Just like so. Just kind of give it a little wiggle. Normally they pop right apart. But it fits right, so now we're gonna put the glue on. Put a dab of glue right there where that hole is. See where the hole is? Put a dab of glue at the hole. Dab of glue on the hole. Always dab of glue on the hole. And then you just snap that thing right together. Voila. And we got that one done. Now, and that's pretty secure, so we can move on. And we're going to find our 
transmission pan. Oh, well, we'll oil paint. We'll do the oil paint. Okay. Now, this is a really, really good reason here, and I'm going to show this to you just real quick. Okay, if you look right here, okay, I'm going to point with the razor blade here. This is actually part of the motor mount. So you don't want to clip that. So you got to cut it right there and right there. And then you go up here. That's another uh, good thing too about these trees. These trees also can keep you safe. And you cut it like that. Okay. Oop. Losing my instruction book. And then you just very, very carefully take off that little flange right there. But you don't want to take off too much because there's a lip right there. So you want to just be very careful. Make sure that these are good. That's good. And if you look right here, it tells you on the instruction book, but you can also reference it. First, before you do anything, you dry fit it, and it looks great. That's my alarm. Keeps me on track during the daytime. So, it does fit, dry fit, fits really, really well. Now, what I like to do is, on the transmission pan, is I will put just a bead on the very front on the inside and then a bead right here on the very back and if you look very closely it's got a little space in there so when you put this in squeeze it on there okay wait hold on here I didn't put no well the front side didn't glued right okay so we'll put a little bit extra here just a little bit. There we go. And then you stick it right on there like so. Give it a little hold. And be careful not to, to get fingerprints on everything if you can avoid it on this on the especially on the thermometer. Just kind of sit there and just kind of give this a little quick hold. And now we've completed. Part B of step one. See, we're, getting, we're, we're, we're starting to get things done. Now we just gotta do the oil, and then we gotta do the transmission pan. And this here is real thin, so, and sometimes you'll actually take them off the tree and you won't even have to trim them, just like I just did. Now this here, You'll see that there's a box right there. There's a flange. See that flange? You want to just put just a little bit on that flange. Just put a bead on top of the flange. A lot of people, what they do is they go on the outside of it, and all it does is just squishes the glue everywhere. What that'll do is, is that'll actually set inside the transmission pan. So, and then you just very carefully hold on here. Figure out what the monkey's done here. Okay. So it's sitting flat. See, I didn't dry. Aha. Found out what it is. Should have dried. I should have dried. Checked it. If you look right here, you see that bit right there? You gotta take that out. That's called flanging. That's casting flange. That's the reason why it ain't fitting right. So basically, you just cut straight across the back side of that flange. And you want to scoop it, kind of like you do, kind of like a spoon. 
See, now I got glue all over my knife. So we got to clean that up. All right. Let's take that out. And then we're going to try this again. See, even we, even us pros make mistakes. There we go. Now, squish it on there. Get it in there real good. Boy, now we're looking good. It's gonna be a hot, hot rod when it's finished. That's a, that's a nice looking engine right there. What do you think? Hmm? Pretty good. Oh yeah, I love I love silver. Now, you can also paint it gray. You can paint it red. I mean, transmission. I just I like I like aluminum and chromoly. So anyway, go ahead and let this sit for a moment. And we're going to do the, these parts here, which got the front of the engine, got the compressor. This is basically the water pump, time and chain cover in your oil filter. And uh, this is your compressor, and this is the belt. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to swing over here. And we're going to find, this is one. I'm pretty much a visual. I can find these pretty quickly. This is the, and there we go. There's the belt. Now the belt, now a lot of people will sit there and they'll go like this with the belt and they'll bend it. Okay, highly, highly not recommend it. The reason why is because you will break, you will break the belt right there. And you'll break the belt right there. The first thing we gotta do is we gotta clean off the Blue. You can also sharpen your exacto blade nice like this. It's not healthy on this one now. This is more of a scraper than it is a knife. Here we go. So basically, my high suggestion. An organized work area is also highly recommended. These are my tools. Like I said before, you want to snip away from it as much as you can. Okay. So that way you got just a little bit on there. See? And then, uh, depending on your work area, you can actually trim it on your table. And this is this is my workbench. Somebody out there is probably saying, oh my gosh, he's cutting on his kitchen table. Nope, this is more expensive. Trust me, you don't want to cut your, your wife's kitchen table. Exactly. Right. Okay, and sometimes there'll be a little bit of a pain. But whatever works for you, but just, just don't put any pressure on it because you will snap them. Okay. And then you basically you look at your instruction book. I'll just go to get it. Whoop. I just realized something. Hmm. I actually jumped a step. But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to finish it. Okay. Now. Then you take your part right here. And again, cut away from the part. Snip it. Like so. This one here actually we can actually take that right off. See so some of these you can actually do that with. And it'll just come right off most of the plant uh, the flashing. And
and then we go over here and just, just take off that nub. Always make sure you get your E to B dinky little flange pieces and put them in a separate container because you might get it confused with the part when you're looking for small parts. But anyway, back on the farm, as we say. You want to dry fit it. Okay, now this here is a little bit hard to dry fit. And amazingly, I don't understand why they have it in the instruction book. So, and this is a real, real, real good example of parts that is not illustrated very well in the instruction book. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the compressor, we're going to take these parts here, and I like to pre-assemble if it, if, if it if it's not uh, already assembled in one piece, pre-assemble the interior uh, square, is what I call it. So that way, if this happens, you can just take, put your parts right in there. It makes a good container. Also, it tells you what what parts the model goes to. And we're going to put them right here for right now. And we're going to jump back to... There was a tick, 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 and I have no idea where it went. Hope that wasn't a small part. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this assembly right here. Which is, it looks like it's the steering belt alternator and the belt assembly. So we'll do this right here. Right where my fingers at. Okay, and that's a, a, a pretty simple, again, um, you got to be very, very careful. Now some of them, you can actually take your fingernail. Now I like to have long fingernails on my thumb. I'm also a guitar player and I use these as picks. You can also just take it and if you're pushing on the tree, you can actually break them off with your fingernail. You can, act, But you gotta watch it because you can also stick a plastic right underneath your fingernail. That hurts. But it's all good. Pay attention to where you're trimming at Make sure you're not trimming anything that is not to be trimmed, but yet look very carefully at the part to make sure that the flange, because sometimes you'll get a flat flange and you got to trim it off. It's a lot easier to trim them off and really look at them when you're painting them. So that way you don't have to go back and touch things up. But go ahead and, and, and that's right there's ready to go. But then you go over here and you get your chrome and you look for the part. Hmm. I'm looking here somewhere. Give me just a second here. There it is. Oh, and I got an example. Remember in day six when I told you about that sometimes small parts will fall off while they're in the box. Okay, this is a great example. Now, this calls for part number 53. Now, uh, let's see. this is a great example, and I'm going to show you real quick here. Right here is part 53 right where my finger's at. And if you notice there ain't no part there, you know where it's at. I'll pull the bag, I'll pull the tree out just a little bit so you can see better. It's right there. That is the reason why you always put your parts back in your bag, or you never cut these parts open until you're ready to use them. Because that right there could have fell on the table, fell on the floor, and then you wouldn't have an alternator to put on your mouth. But yep, so, and my suggestion on how to get the part out, you take the, you see that? You gotta be careful. Oop. And I'll get it real quick here. Take the part, drop it in your palm of your hand. See the small parts? You got small parts on there? Always put them back in the bag. 
and put the bag up so it's like that. That way, all the, if the part falls, like this one, it's going to dry it off. It doesn't fall out of the bag. So, it saves a lot of headaches. I know. So now what you do is you look at your instruction book and put the part right where you know where it's at, where you're not going to knock it off onto the floor. Take a drop of glue. Just a drop. You don't need much. A lot of people glob their models up. They think more glue is better to hold. Trust me. We're going to let that kind of work a little bit. Okay. We'll soften it. This is a real hot idea. When, and it's best to do these on the tree, actually, but since this was fall off, what you want to do is you want to take the razor blade and you just kind of want to take the back side of it right here, the back side of the razor blade, not the, not the edge part, but the back side, okay? The very back side. And you want to just go around just a little bit and take a little bit of the chrome off on the inside. The reason why is because the chrome, sometimes chrome parts uh, will not adhere, depends on how well they're chrome. There's nickel in chrome. And that nickel actually keeps the glue from activating and fusing it, fusing it together. So take just a little bit off on the inside of it and then just put it right on there like that. And this thing might be a little bit of a pain in the butt because okay yep it's going to be a pain alright And you want to do it like it is on the instruction book. Now, I have found that, I want to stick you right there for right now. And you want, really want to just be very vigilant when you're building these. And this is a good example of being vigilant. Okay, because the way that this is these put together, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to assemble the front of the engine with the water pump, is because some of these models line up parts with other parts, and this is one of them. And we're going to stick this on here like so. Okay, it's being a pain. Okay, again. All right. And then just very, very, very visually look at it. Now, the uh, the, the belt system, you put the belt system on and the compressor, okay? Now, a lot of people will ask me, well, how do you line up uh, certain parts? Uh, I've done a lot of work uh, specifically on uh, Pontiacs, uh, on the Trans Am. I love Trans Am. I used to have a, I've had a couple of these Trans Ams, and, and they're, they're a joy to own, and even more of a joy to drive. So I pretty much know exactly where stuff goes, okay? But if you don't, uh, what you can do is uh, basically just get pictures online, you know, and, and just visually build from the pictures. Small drop of glue on that right there. 
we're going to sometimes it's it will become a pain this one really wants to be a pain so what we're going to do is we're going to do the roll and there's two holes on this that you got to line up being a real pain. This is the reason why you got to dry. Again, you got to dry fit everything because the holes ain't quite big enough. And then what you do is you try it again. And that's going to have to be probably going to have to be touched up a little bit before we're done. And Again, uh, we'll just okay, and just kind of, and, and, and again, just kind of visualize, okay. And you notice that the, the alternator bracket actually goes right up against the, uh, goes right up against the water pump. Now on an actual, on a real car, on the real Trans Am, it bolts to it. So, and I'll just kind of show you just real quick here. The... which this is the flange right here. Okay, the flange is actually located right here on this. Okay, it rests right there in your water pump. It goes to one of your water pump bolts. So, and that's basically how we did it on here. And I'll just give you a better visual of it. See right there. See right there is where the the water, the, all narrow hooks up at. And you want to kind of just kind of be very vigilant on it to keep everything straight because turn that fan on please. So that way everything stays straight and you have a nice looking nice looking motor when you're done. So then we're gonna go ahead and, and I know I'm going through this uh, quite quick with you. Uh, just you know I like to use my fingernails. You know, just, just take just take your fingernail like that. I'm teaching you bad habits. The proper way to do it is cut away, because you can break a fin off. Cut away, and you might be able to just wiggle it off, which you can. Be very vigil. Don't. Bend the fans because these fans will break easy. Uh, if you feel you need to, you can put it on your, your desktop and actually uh, snip it off with your X-Acto knife. Now, on this one here, you put the glue on the end of your pin. Okay? And then insert the pin. Now, why is that? Because there's a, if you put the glob on there, it actually pops it back up. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. It pops it back up just a little bit. And that really, uh, in my opinion, in my experience, that puts it right in the right place. So... And that's pretty much it for that. And then you want to put this, put this somewhere where it's, it's safe. And and I like to use tires, you know, like that. 
these tires in my garage for tires uh, for engine stands. I mean, I, when I work on real cars, they work great for model swaps, I'm telling you. So, put that right there. And we're good. Now, just moving on while that dries, uh, we're going to move on to the, to the wheels. Because uh, one of the things that I do, that, that I like to do, is I like to uh, preset my chassis a little bit. So that way, and I don't recommend going ahead of yourself. But, uh, you know, right now, you know, with the engine drying, we can't do much with the engine right now until it's completely dry. So, we are going to kind of skip the finishing of the engine. And I'm going to move on to... Uh, this, which you can do all the assembling. I actually already assembled the box, which uh, looks like this. And uh, the seats and everything, I got them. They're not painted. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of paint work now. And give you a little bit of paint tips. So first you want to get your, your parts out. We just might have ourselves almost a built model by the time this episode's over. We got 36 well, Nah, we won't do it quite yet. We still have some. Uh, we're burning some time up, so it's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a paintbrush out. What I like to do is I like to use a uh, a lighter color. Uh, now the instruction book says flat bl uh, says black. Well, the problem with black, with the black trans am, is you can't see the interior. So, what happens is, is the interior blends in with it and you got no detail. So, I always use, uh, like to use gray, uh, or uh, a little bit of gold with tan, you know, and kind of pop off the interior. So, you want to shake it, flip it upside down, let it sit for a moment, and... Uh, just uh, we're, we're going to be running out of time on this, but the next video we will definitely do some painting work So stay tuned Please hit that share button to subscribe Tell all your friends, please We would love to have everybody on board and new friends are super super uh, With the program so please hit the like button share button hit subscribe and Stay tuned don't go nowhere Make sure you tune in on our next video, Painting the 77. So thank you very much for watching.